Hello, Omar. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine you? No. With the patient adequately exposed, look for asymmetry, inspecting both proximally and distally. Note any deformities, such as clawing of the hands. Examine specifically for wasting or hypertrophy of the muscles, fasciculation and involuntary movement. If present, fasciculations are often elicited by flicking the skin over a muscle. Just let your arms go floppy for me. To test tone in the upper limb, hold the patient's hand as if shaking it and use your other hand to support their elbow. Rotate the forearm, flex and extend the wrist, elbow and shoulder, varying the speed and direction of movement. The muscle tone is the resistance felt by the examiner when moving a joint passively. Again, let this arm go floppy. Always compare sides. Muscle tone can be decreased or increased in pathology. There are two principal types of hypertonia, spasticity and rigidity. Next, we look at the deep tendon reflexes. And relax. First, we test the biceps jerk, which uses mainly the C5 nerve root. Use your finger or thumb to palpate the biceps tendon. We test the supinator or brachioradialis jerk. The forearm is in the mid-prone position, and you strike the tendon overlying the distal end of the radius. Move the patient's arms to get a good angle on the triceps tendon. This reflex tests C6 and C7. Eliciting reflexes and deciding whether or not they are normal requires practice. Use reinforcement whenever a reflex appears to be absent. I'm going to strike your arm again. When I tell you to, clench your teeth, but not before I tell you to. Clench. For the upper limb, ask the patient to clench the teeth or make a fist with the other hand. Relax the hand. For the finger jerks, place your middle and index fingers across the palmar surface of the patient's proximal phalanges. Tap your own fingers with the hammer and look for flexion of the patient's fingers. To test the Hoffman reflex, place your right index finger under the distal interphalangeal joint of the patient's middle finger. Using your right thumb, flex their distal phalanx downwards and look for a pathological flexion response in their thumb. Can you hold your arms up by your side like that for me, please? Stop me from pushing them down. Power in abduction. Stop me from pushing them up. And adduction. Now hold them out in front of you like that. Stop me from pulling them away. Elbow flexion. Stop me from pushing them in. And extension. Now place your arms out in front of you and spread your fingers. Stop me from pulling your fingers together. Abduction of the fingers by the dorsal interossei and abductor digiti minimi. Now I want you to grip my fingers and prevent me from pulling them away. Use your index and middle fingers inserted from the thumb side to test grip strength. And relax. Now we test coordination. Place your arms out in front of you, please, and hold them in the same position. To elicit the rebound phenomenon, push the patient's wrist quickly downward and observe the returning movement. Finger nose test. Now take the index finger of your right hand and place it on your nose. Touch my index finger on your nose and do that rapidly for me, please. I'm now going to start moving my finger. I want you to follow it. Now do the same with your left hand. Start slowly with the explanation before asking the patient to speed up. I'm now going to start moving it. If they perform well, then begin to move your finger. Look for past pointing or intention tremor that would indicate cerebellar disease. And relax. Test the ability to make rapid alternating movements. I want you to alternate with your right hand, front and back, like that. Impairment of rapid movements like this is called dysdiadochokinesis. Stop. Now do the same with your left hand. Evident as slowness, disorganization and irregularity of movement. Also typical of cerebellar disease. Relax. Now I'd like you to pretend you're drinking a cup of tea on a saucer. Testing for dyspraxia. 
difficulty performing a motor task, despite the patient understanding it, and in the absence of motor weakness, cerebellar, extrapyramidal, or sensory impairment. Now I'd like you to copy those shapes and then write a sentence. Inability to draw a geometric figure is called constructional apraxia and is a feature of parietal disturbance. Writing a sentence requires intact language function as well as fine motor control of the hand. Dysgraphia is normally due to a dominant parietal lobe lesion. Now could you put on your jumper? Dressing apraxia is often associated with spatial disorientation and neglect. It is usually due to non-dominant hemisphere parietal lesion. And relax. Thank you.